obviously being built in 1740 was here before the canal but the canal came through the, the canal actually was part of the main road uh, where, or where the canal is is where the main road was from New Brunswick uh, that then became moved to the other side of the house and the canal came through here uh, there's evidence though we have no concrete evidence that this may have been, was a stopping point of some of the barges and so just from the uh, configuration of the canal. Uh, and we were still researching that, but we're trying to find out where, how this fit into the canal. Well, but it's an important part of this heritage. The Canal Day is a celebration of the canals of, uh, uh, in particular the Delaware Raritan Canal, but the canals of New Jersey to show how they were important to the uh, economy of New Jersey and to the people of New Jersey. This is an annual event. We uh, have that uh, every year, usually this uh, weekend after Labor Day. We, uh, we bring in the Civil War reenactments uh, since the uh, canal was very active during the time of the Civil War. The, uh, so it's a nice fair. The grounds Parking are free. Uh, we have, though, exhibits in the house that are very interesting uh, to see and not uh, what we normally have a nominal fee for. Uh, the information, you know, if you're looking for this, look for the house on the web, which is www.stotshouse.com. weaver all the way through, you can all the way through all of these pairs, you do two at a time, and I'm going to attach this one, because this one's coming from that pin, and if I go in that direction, it's got to go to that hole, so I'm going to do four at a time, cross, and here they twist, are. cross, and then that pair is done, and then you take this, and you go cross, twist, cross, and then that pair is done. And then you go through this one, cross. And it's like you're doing a weaving, like you ever do pot holders? Where you have things going this way, and you go in and out and in and out. It's doing that, but with two at a time. That's essentially what happens when you do this. And when they finally did get to build, start building DNR in the 1830s, it, I believe it was the third attempt to get this canal started. It had actually been talked about at the very beginning of the 19th century, and there were attempts to get it going, but it didn't get off the ground to the 1830s. Um, but again, I have this map here. This is an 18th century map, and the idea here is just to show you Philadelphia's here, New York City's here. Of course, you know that. Construction began, as I said, in 1830. Um, the chief engineer was Canvas White, and you may know that name. He was the chief engineer on the Erie Canal, and he oversaw the project until 1834, right when it was com coming to completion. It's when he passed away. Groundbreaking, as I said, started in 1830, and that was in Kingston, which was historically known as the actual center point of the canal. At that point, actually, it was a little further north in Gravestown, but Gravestown was always known as the halfway point. Um, the entire length of the DNR was course done by hand, including the feeder, and we're talking about pickaxes and wheelbarrows and shovels and basically human strength. The cemeteries 
or in unmarked graves. We also think there might be places in Lambertville where they were buried, but we don't have any records, unfortunately. This picture actually was not taken during the digging of DNR because photography wasn't invented yet. But this picture comes from repair work that was being done on the Delaware Canal, which was on the Pennsylvania side after um, the 1903 flood, I believe it was. And as you can see in this picture, there's no water in the canal. They had to um, lock it off so that they could make the repairs that were needed. But I threw the picture in here because basically the laborers that you see here are working in the same fashion that the men in the 1830s would have been working. We see wheelbarrows, we see axes and shovels and so forth. And it was basically hard, hard work. So the canal is completed in June of 1834. It costs about $2.8 million to complete it. Um, and this is kind of my stats page, just to give everybody an idea of how long the canal was. It ran 44 miles from Bordentown to New Brunswick, the main section. The feeder canal was 22 miles from Raven Rock to Trenton. Um, the, the feeder was not quite as deep as the main canal. It was 60 feet wide at water level and 50 feet um, at the bottom and 6 feet deep. Um, this is an old. This particular one is an old piece. However, this type dates back hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, Inuit and people from Alaska use a knife, a stone knife that's this shape of an uluk. So this is the same, you know, the same family of things. Um, mace was very commonly used. Do you know what mace comes from? Nutmeg. Right, the husk of yeah. nutmeg. I would say you've been around, but I don't it's mean that. It's the husk of the nut. Yes, the outside husk. These are um, mustard balls. When you get mustard seed, mm -hmm. they would grind it up, and I honestly, I'm sorry, but I forgot what it's it's mixed with to hold it together. But if you needed a, a little bit of mustard, you would take some of this and you can add it to your dish. Mm -hmm. That's uh, called a tin kitchen, a tin roaster, some people call it reflector oven. I've made ducks, chickens, oven stuffers, 13 pound turkey, roast. What's neat about this is, well, it's a very simple piece of technology, but it works so exceedingly well. People want to know they think, okay, you're cooking on a fire. So I made I made a turkey that was 13 pounds. How long did it take? Well, how long does a turkey take in your oven? Okay. Yeah. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. And it was done to perfection. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a lot of work